video, I am going to show you how to make this patchwork drawstring bag. I have these patchwork on both sides of the patchwork bag and it's got a box bottom and it's perfect for a sock project or a baby sweater. I hope you enjoy it. To make this project, we are going to use a couple of charm packs. Now, you don't have to go out and buy an entire charm pack. You could use scrap fabric or just pull out a couple of sheets of these five by five. The one I'm using today is by Riley Blake called Reflections. And I have picked out four pieces of fabric. So you are going to need a dark and a light just for contrast, right? So I, I've selected these two pairs and also some linen fabric, and this is going to go around your stars. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to face these right side together. So this is a pair, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one, right side together. And I am going to sew around it, quarter, uh, quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew around the whole thing. I will be back in a minute. So now all we're going to do is just cut on the diagonal line. It's best to try not to move your fabric and just lift your ruler up and cut it this way, corner to corner. So the idea is when you open it, it's going to look like this. Once you have all your triangles cut up, now we're going to square this up. So what this means is I usually use my quilt in a day triangle square up ruler. I'm going to line up the piece that I've just cut and sew, sew and cut against the three inch mark. I find that this is really the best way to trim your triangle. So if you don't have one, I, I recommend investing in this ruler. So the way it works is you want to line up this number three line against this line that you just sewed, right? So this is how it looks. Maybe hard to see, but I'm going to do my best. You lined up that number three line against the line that you sewed, and then you are simply going to trim this There you go. And you are going to open this up and iron it. Now, when you iron it, you will notice that you have something here that we call the dog ear. You can trim this later, but since I am here with the scissor, I like to just do my best and just trim off that what we call dog ear. Now, when you open it, it's good enough for me. So then I don't have to come back to the cutting board later and take care of that. And then you're going to do that with all of your pieces and then you will iron this open. I usually press my seam to the dark side. Now, if you don't have a rotating mat like I don't, I find it easier to flip your triangle so it's you're cutting this way. If you're cutting this way, I find it really hard for your hand to come down this angle. So I suggest that you have the triangle 90 degree here pointing this direction. Then you just have to lay your ruler right on top of it. And I find it's easier to navigate your arm in this direction. Now you have all your pieces cut and trim and iron. The easiest thing to do is to make sure your darker fabric is on the inside and the lighter ones are touching each other. So this is the best way to remember. So for example, the dark side facing the inside and the lighter ones touching each other. Otherwise, I, I find that I get confused sometimes. So is this right? This is facing the inside, but the bright, yeah, but you want the bright, the lighter side to touch each other. There you go. So now you have the stars pointing outward and we're going to make the inside. Now with the inside, you, can have, you have a couple of different options. You could do uh, blocks, you can do one large block, or you could do more half square triangle. So let me think about my options here and I'll come back. 
I've decided to simply do the same thing for the inside. So I did two more pairs and I sewed them together and I'm going to cut them open like we did before, corner to corner. That will be my first cut. I'm gonna leave it as is, lift my ruler up and do another cut corner to corner. And do the same thing with this one, corner to corner. Trim, leave it on touch, move the, lift the ruler and move it this direction, corner to corner. Then we're going to do the same thing with our ruler. Again, we're going to lay it this direction, line it on the number three line. Okay. And then we're going to trim it this direction. Be careful with your fingers. And do my best to trim the dog ears. There you go. So I'll let you in on a secret. I was too lazy to set up my iron, so I just finger pressed it open. Okay, so now let's see if we can put the triangle back together again. So we want this side facing the inside of the square and the white, the, uh, the lighter fabric should touch each other. So I think I did that right. There you go. Okay, so this should face the inside this way bright side touching each other and this way and that way okay and then now let's do this side i think it goes is it this way let's think about that There you go. You basically want this to be touching, this to be touching. Does that look right? There you go. On the second thought, I think I am going to try this way and see how I like that. No, I don't like it. So let's see. What if I go, what if I go this way and this way? Nope, don't like that. So I think I'm going to go with this pattern. I, I think I kind of like it. Um, it's more obvious with the red prints, but I really love this cherry and the blue fabric. I think it's adorable. Um, and so what I need to do is to cut up four squares to go into the corner. And I think I'm going to use linen fabric and this is going to be the main body of the bag. So I think I will use those for the four corners. I will play with it and see how it looks and I will come back in a minute. And basically what you would do is cut four pieces of three by three fabric. So, you know, every single square you have is three by three. So obviously these will also be three by three. Then I will sew them together this way and then row by row and I will be back in a minute. Okay, so this is the other option. I think I actually may like this one more because I feel like the reds kind of go together and the green and the light blue, well, this is kind of like a light greenish blue. I think these go together really well. So I feel like this looks more like a star. So I think I may stick with this. I'm going to just walk away, get something to drink, come back and see which one I decide on. Either the blue with the red cherries or stick with something that doesn't introduce uh, new colors. What do you think? So I decided to try a different combination and I think this is my favorite. I'm going to go with this. I think at the end of the day, you basically want two main colors. So in this case, it's red and green. And so I think previously when I had blue and white, it, it kind of distracts from the overall look. So um, suggestion is to stick with the same shade of green, a similar shade of red. This way you could clearly see it's a star design. Okay, so I have sewn them together and ironed it. I really like the way it looks. Now, I think I need to trim this. Um, so let's take a look. 
I centered this on the six all the way down. I'm using the, the line on the cutting mat to see how much I need to trim this. Um, I'm just going to trim it so it's even all the way around as best as I can. Um, but I don't want to cut away too much of each block. So I think it should be 10 on each side. Yeah, it's about 10. So I'm going to trim it down. Well, right now it's it's kind of like a 10 and a quarter-ish. So I'm just going to trim it, trim it down so it's 10 by 10. I finished the 10 by 10 star block. And I wanted to make it bigger, right? Because when you make the project back, it will eat into your block. And I didn't want the star, the... Um, the points to be chopped off. So what I did was I added a, um, I cut a strip of linen two inches wide and I attach it to each side. So the left and right side, as well as the top. For the bottom, I cut a piece that's about five inches wide and attach it to the bottom because I figure I would do a box bottom. I don't know, this seems kind of big, but you know, I'm going to play with it because I can always trim it. But if I don't have enough, I, it's harder to add it back on. So I figure I'll just do a little more, um, although it looks very strange the way <laughs> you look at look at this as a, as a whole piece, right? But I think it will be okay. Um, and you know, I ran out of this linen that I use and I wish I had more because I think it would have been a better match. Um, it wouldn't look so much as a square. I think if this had been the same prints or the same style as linen as the rest of the body, the star would have popped out more, but I think it's okay. So this is the, the um, one side of the exterior. And this is the other side of the exterior. So I've got both sides of the exterior made. I'm going to cut up the interior piece as well as a piece that will go on top. That's the... Uh, the channel for the drawstring. And I am thinking if I should line the exterior, which is this piece, with either interfacing or batting. I think if I do batting, I will be able to quilt it and the quilting lines will come through and it will look really pretty. But given this is going to be a project bag for my probably sock project for knitting, I, I like to be able to pull the drawstring and scrunch it up. And I think using batting would just make it thicker than I prefer. So I think I may just line this with um, interfacing, you know, the thin interfacing. So it would just be an exterior piece, interfacing, and a lining piece. I, I may just do that because I, I like my bags to be pretty lightweight. So I can just, you know, pull on the drawstring, close it and, and place it in another bag. And I don't, this is really not intended to be a main bag that I carry everywhere. It's really a project bag to store my knitting project that I can, you know, place in another bag. So I think being very lightweight and able to kind of just bend around and scooch, you know, scooch it around and, and throw it into another bag is, is probably more important than having this be very, um, um, what's the word, um, structure. So I am going to give this a try and see how it looks. So I'm just going to measure this so I know how much of my interfacing to cut. Now the interfacing that I'm using is um, mid to heavy weight fusible 931TD. I think anything similar will be fine. Um, and so let's see. So this is about 12 and a half. I'm just going to cut 12 and a half one direction. And then the other side is 15 and three fourth. So I think I will do 15, 15 and a half as well. Okay, so I have lined the exterior piece with interfacing. And I've also cut out the lining piece. And um, I really just placed the exterior on top of the lining piece and figure out how much to, to cut. Um, I now need to figure out what casing fabric, what fabric I'm going to use for the casing. So I've got, there's these. I don't think this is, goes very well with it. Um, there's these, I don't like that. 
um i think maybe just this fabric um this is the interior should i use this for the casing you know i think i'm just gonna go with linen the exact same color for the casing which is this that i've got so i am going to i think i want my casing to be let's take a look um you know, there's obviously going to be a quarter inch on each side um, from sewing the bag. And then I think I want maybe one inch in. So I think my casing will be about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe ten, I think maybe ten inches for the length of the, the channel. So I will cut ten and a half. And I think I want it to be um and maybe like a little less than an inch in in height so let me play with the dimension i will be back so i ended up cutting the width to two and a half and the length is 11 folded in half iron the um each side in a little bit just to finish the edge and then let's take a look and see how this looks so I think it will be a quarter of an inch right there. That casing looks a little too big for me, I think. Um, I think I'm gonna trim this a little bit to maybe just two inches and go from there. So I've sewn the two exterior pieces together, right side facing. I just sewed it all the way around, leaving the top open. And I did the same thing with the interior piece where I sew the right side together, leaving the top open. Went all the way around. I left about a two inch gap here to turn the bag inside out when we're all done. Now I'm going to box the bag, which will give it um, structure and the bottom edge. So let me figure out how much to box the bottom. I'm thinking maybe two inches so i am going to draw a square that's two by two so i think that will give me right around um, that much left i think that looks good so let's do two by two you know that measurement looks a little off let me double check yeah, see, I was off. It's always good to double check because you would not want to make a mistake. Okay, there you go. Now that's two by two. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and sew this together. And you will do that with all four corners. I will repeat boxing the corner of the interior side. This is obviously the bottom, okay, two by two. Same thing on this side, two by two. And we will sniff off the corner. Oops. Okay, so I have box each corner and I am going to turn the exterior one right side out, pushing out the corners. Making sure everything looks good. Everything lines up nicely. And I should also mention that I have temporarily stitched the um, casing on there. Okay, so this is the exterior piece. And the interior piece, we're going to just leave it as is. Wrong side facing. And then we're going to put the main bag into the interior bag.
This is why we left a gap on the side because we're going to sew the top close. It helps to have some pins ready. Some clips. So what I usually do is I try to find the side seam first so I can line them up, clip it. Same thing on this side. Clip it, then it's easier to clip the rest. This is why we sew the casing on first, so it's um, fewer pieces to navigate. This looks like it's a little too much fabric. I'm just going to trim that off. Okay, now we're going to sew the top close all the way around and we'll come back and flip it inside out, right side out. Okay, I have sewn the top all the way around and we're going to flip it. This is very exciting. I think I should have left the gap a little bigger. I think two inches is a little too small, but I don't really want to try to correct that at this point in time. So I am going to just do my best to turn this inside, right side out. I find it easier to pull on the exterior piece gently. You don't want to rip anything while you're doing this. Okay, note to self, leave the gap bigger than two inches next time. Here we go. I think this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is to, to close this up, right? You're going to sew this close. And then I will push everything inside into the bag, give it a good press, and then I am going to top stitch all the way around. I really should have done stamping of my logo before I cut and sew everything together. But since I didn't, let's just do it now. Let's practice. So usually I try to ink my stamp, remove the extra ink on the block. We're going to stamp it on, stamp it on a piece of paper. Okay, that looks good. All right, let's ink it one more time. Remove the access. Then I think it would be good to find the center. So it's around right here. I think I'm going to stamp it right there. That's obviously a um, removable ink. One, two, three. Oh boy, I hope this comes out good. Oh, perfect. Love it. Now I'm going to um, heat seal it. So I've got my logo stamped. I've turned my bag inside out. I have closed the gap on the inside of the side steam seam. I've got my casing on. I'm pretty much done. I think I love the way this came out. I just need to um, place some sort of rope or something so we can close this. But this looks great. And I love the, um, the bottom as well. I think the, the two by two corners turned out great.